We are on a safari today. We're here to hunt the illustrious bird called terraform. Now this bird can be seen in the trees. It can also be seen in the leaves, but most importantly, it can be seen on Mars. And that is why we have to terraform Mars. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can learn terraform in only one day or less. You, may, you might be able to learn it in less than one day. So you might want to learn Terraform because it is the up and coming technology right now. Like if you look on like Reddit DevOps, like everyone is talking about Terraform. Terraform this, Terraform that, Terraform Mars, Terraform Earth. Like maybe not those last two, but everyone's learning, wanting to learn Terraform because for, there's a couple of, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to learn it. So Terraform is a very useful skill that you want to learn. And if you're expected to continue like your career, you want to, you're expected to continue learning new technologies and Terraform is one of those hip and new technologies that you're kind of expected to learn if you want to continue in your career. So if you don't want to, if you don't continue learning, you'll be left in the dust and you'll become a caveman and you don't want to become a caveman. Like you might have to learn COBOL, you know, like 40 year old language. You don't want to do that, right? So that's why you want to learn new stuff, which is much better and more easier or easier to use. So if you don't know what Terraform is, it is this, um, it's kind of infrastructure as code. So it's from the co company HashiCorp, very like evil company kind of name, but it's not, they're not evil at all. At least I don't think they are. But um, so it's similar in nature to AWS's cloud creation templates, if you are familiar with that. So it allows you to build and change and version your infrastructure easily. So like you deploy something once, you can deploy it again, like with the same version or whatnot and roll back easily. So you can do this for multiple cloud providers, and that is where the, the big kicker comes in. Multiple cloud providers, so you're not relying on AWS or Google or Microsoft. Or you can do whatever you want to do, whatever cloud provider you want to do. So it also can work with in-house in -house solutions. So if you have like something on-premise, you're not tied down to any service providers. Now, before I begin with uh, Terraform and how you're going to kind of get started with it, make sure to penta click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That's penta is five, if you did not know. <laughs> All right, let's begin. All right, so Terraform has a lot of use cases. And if I have not sold you yet on Terraform, let me sell you now. So some of the use cases, this is straight from Terraform's website, by the way. So Heroku app setup, you want to set up an app easily. There's multi-tier applications that you, if you can just type in some, Terraform code and boom, you got a multi-tier application that might take years normally to set up. So there's self-service clusters, software demos. If you want to set up a real quick demo for like uh, some software you want to make, but you don't you you want to make it, you want to sell it to the the people that are gonna pay for the making of the software. You can just make a demo for that real quick. So you can make disposable environments. Maybe set something up real quick and then you'll dispose of it. So there's Software defined networking. So you define what kind of like networking. So for like AWS, that'd be like VPCs. You can define on that with Terraform. Of course, that's a little bit more complicated than like just setting an S3 bucket up, but it comes with experience to learn that kind of stuff. So there's resource schedulers, multi-cloud deployment, like I said, mentioned earlier in the video. So yeah, those are some of the use cases. So you might be saying to yourself, hey, Terraform kind of seems similar to stuff like Chef and Puppet. Well, there are some differences as well. So Terraform is, um, is not configuration management like Chef and Puppet are. So instead of configuration management like uh, Chef and Puppet, Terraform focus on, focuses on more on initialization, like initializing the resources and then kind of creating those resources. So bootstrap, I mean, sorry, Terraform can also be used to bootstrap those resources as well. Before learning Terraform, I would first recommend to start learning a cloud provider if you do not know one already. So this can be any cloud, any cloud provider, whether it be AWS, Azure, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Provider, you know, VMware, there's, there's a million, IBM, there's a million cloud providers. You just really have to pick one. Of course, I'm a little biased towards AWS since I use that on a daily basis. So I will reference those, or AWS, since it is like the biggest cloud provider right now. So for example, with AWS, I would focus on learning maybe CloudFormation templates because CloudFormation templates kind of, they were kind of around and more popular before even Terraform came out. So, and they're very similar, CloudFormation templates and Terraform. So the basically you write something in CloudFormation templates and it'll create the services in AWS that will be called. 
Another important part about Terraform is that Terraform is basically you declare what the end is declarative. So what that means is that you're declaring the end state. So what what this really means, like for the common person, is that declaring the end state is like you put an order at, in that Chipotle for like the what you want in the bowl or the burrito. Like you want rice, beans, whatever meat or not meat or vegetables or whatnot. So that's the end state. That's what the the end state of the the burrito or the burrito bowl is. And that's not saying how it gets done. So that's this is what declarative means. It doesn't like say what steps and what order you put the ingredients or the resources in to make the end result. As for actually learning how to use the specifics of Terraform, I would start with HashiCorp's very own guide themselves. So with the, all, it's really simple to use Terraform. So you basically you install it, you install Terraform, you go through the steps, and then you eventually are going to set it up to access your web provider. So you have to get all the access keys for your web provider, and then you can you can, you can use Docker if you want. And then you basically make a directory for it, and then you paste like this Terraform configuration to a file, name it main.tf, and then you initialize the project, and you're pretty close to being done at this point. So after you do all of that and use Nginx, you can go on to the next step. Next. So you, you can watch their videos if you really want to. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can type AWS configure if you're using AWS. But you can do this with Azure. You would just like look up the st steps on how to configure your credentials with Azure. And it's going to be pretty straightforward as, or similar as well. And this is if you want to do it with AWS, though. So you wanna, if you want to write configuration, so you can do that. You can then, then you're making a file here called example. And then you're just setting up really the, the cloud provider and the credentials for that cloud provider. And for example, here, your T2 micro, you're setting up a server on AWS. And then there's blocks, there's providers, there's resources. Then you can initialize the directory with Terraform init. You format, format and validate the configuration. And then you can create your infrastructure. It's just kind of really all that simple. You can change infrastructure. You can destroy infrastructure. You can destroy the world. Oh, don't actually do that one. You can provision your infrastructure and then defining a provisioner and stuff like that. It's all pretty straightforward. So I would go through all the steps and make sure you're really like understanding how the how to use the basics of Terraform because before you get into like more advanced stuff, you have to really understand the basics of how to set up all these Terraform files and the specifics of your vendor as well. So I would say this should like going through all these steps should take less than an hour. I mean there's not that many. There's what like eight things and really this install like it says like at the top, it took like six minutes, 11 minutes, five. It should really take less than an hour to go through all these steps. And then once you're done with that, you can maybe start experimenting on your own. Maybe work on like a little small Terraform code project where you make some like cool infrastructure. It has to be fun and enjoyable. That's what I, I would really recommend. So install the CLI and start building with Terraform. So let me go through the steps again. So you, you set up your access with Terraform with the cloud provider, get all the access keys set up. Then you write the Terraform code that you want to tell Terraform what resources it should make in the cloud providers. I.e., should it make an S3 bucket? Should it make an EC2 from AWS? What policy should the bucket have? And et cetera. And then you're going to run the plan and then provision the resources. So that's really the basic steps on how you're going to set up Terraform. So I would not finish, like, I would not stop at just like the basics of Terraform. I would continue learning Terraform, look look at every single like documentation on it. If you really want to become like get a job that uses Terraform, you have to understand all the ins and outs of it. Like they might ask you like simple interview questions like how do you use Terraform in this situation? Like how have you used Terraform before? And you might want to have some projects on it. And maybe if they can be silly or fun pro projects, it really doesn't matter. Like as long as the projects that ha have used it and have like used the intricacies of it and you can explain them well. Like the silly the more silly the fun, the more you can remember them honestly. And as long as you're, it keeps you interested in it, that's is really what is gonna keep you going. Because if you give up, like after like a week or a day, like what's the point of even doing that? And just like I don't know, I guess you can you can do it for a day and just say you, you're done. But if it keeps you interested for more than that, that's better, right? So Terraform at the end of the day is one in the mini list, the long list of growing technologies that you need to get a, do a job like in DevOps. So I wouldn't stop learning there. I would. 
start learning some of the other DevOps technologies. And there's a lot of them. Like, like I, I mentioned Docker. I mentioned uh, Puppet and Chef in this video as well. So they're all useful DevOps technologies. So I would, not also, I would also not expect to just get a job just because you know the basics of Terraform. You have to know a lot more than that just to get a job that uses Terraform. Anyways, that is the end of this, avoid, the end of this video. I hope you found it entertaining or educational or, or something. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, make sure to hit that like. And, and if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.